I, I felt like I needed to shift a little bit, receive the offering at the end, but then after we receive the offering, after the message, we have baptisms. <laughs> but I, I really do need you to now shift your heart and your mind, your soul, to receive the word of the Lord. Make the seedbed of your heart fertile to receive a seed and block out any distractions because the word of God is living and active and it is sharper than any double-edged sword. It will cut and it will divide the soul and the spirit, the joint and the marrow and then it will judge the thoughts and the intentions of our heart. That's what the word of God does. Jeremiah said that the word of God is like fire. The shut up in my bones. But he also said that the word of God is like a hammer. It will destroy and break any barrier. So you're about to receive the word of the Lord today. I'm just a messenger. And whatever I declare in the message, I've already been processed and am still being processed with it. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. I am, I can't seem to get off of the message series entitled, I Got to Get There. I just can't get away from it. I got to get there. And for those who are new here with us today, I, I just need to kind of lay a quick foundation for those who have heard this introduction a million times. I need you to hear it again because repetition is the mother of knowledge. And so getting there, getting there. You know, our lives are full of failures and victories. Many times our failures are not by commission, they're by omission. Um, because we fail to do what we were supposed to do. Getting there is a word of encouragement and a prophetic word of direction that we have to get to the place that God's called us to. You've done well, my young Padawans, okay? You've done quite well getting here to this church this morning. But this is just the beginning. You got to get there into the place where God needs you to be. And that takes a 24-7 effort. There is power in getting there. Now, some of y'all can probably quote this, but I'm going to say it. I was reading through the book of Acts several weeks ago, and I recognized the number 120. And for you Bible scholars, you know that there were 120 people that were in the upper room that received the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Now, why 120? Because in 1 Corinthians 15, 6, it talks about that Jesus appeared after the resurrection. He appeared to more than 500 brothers and sisters at the same time. After the resurrection, Jesus hung out with his disciples for 40 days. He would appear out of nowhere. He's omnipresent, living in his glorified body. And he would encourage his, his, his disciples. And what I mean by disciples, not just the 12. The disciples, Jesus had more than 12. He had 12 of his inner circle. However, he had hundreds of other disciples that believed in him. He appeared to 500 at one time. And then as he kept meeting with them, he begins to tell them that instructions about the kingdom and all kinds of stuff. And why was there only 120 that actually obeyed what he asked? Could it be that they, I use this term, self-aggrandized? What does that mean? Well, they began to be more worried and concerned about their own stuff than the commandment of the Lord. Travel ball kicked in. 
this club kicked in. You gotta pick up extra shifts at work. All of a sudden that kicked in. And it just could be that their schedules got overwhelmed. On the 40th day that Jesus was with them, the Bible says that he ascended to heaven. But then he, before he ascended to heaven, in other words, he said, yo, homeboys, I'm not going to be doing this the whole time. Now you got to do it. But go to the upper room and pray and have a long prayer meeting until you are endued with power. Until the release and the baptism of the Holy Spirit occurs. Well, that was on the 40th day. We know that that actually occurred on the 50th day, hence 50 Pentecost. Penta means 50. The day of Pentecost. A 10-day prayer meeting. It could be that he spoke to over 500, but only a 120 ended up at the prayer meeting. Pastor Victoria and I, we think about this every Saturday night going into Sunday. And I always ask myself, and I want to think about it, it comes across my mind and I say, Lord, who's going to be there on Sunday? Who's going to be able to be there? And just know this, that we'll never know which church service will immensely affect our lives, but we know it won't be the one that we skipped. Because there is power in getting there. Power in getting there. That's why we've been studying Psalms 84. We, we're going to be on this for a little bit. If there's going to be a psalm that you're going to know is Psalm 84. One thing that we do is we practice the public reading of God's word and, and the congregational reading of God's word. Let's all stand and read. We're going to be reading from Psalms 84. Then we're going to slide into Deuteronomy. And we're going to read a few verses in the book of Deuteronomy, verse chapter 28. Wherever you see bold and underlined, that's where you come in with a thunderous voice. Okay? So you have to say it really loud. And if this is uncomfortable for you, it's okay. Just follow the lead of the, at least the first three rows. They know exactly what's happening. Psalms 84, it says, How lovely is your dwelling place, Lord Almighty. My soul yearns even faints for the courts of the Lord. My heart and my flesh cry out for the living God. Oh, man, that's somebody that's hungry and thirsty right there, man. Verse 3, even the sparrow has found a home and a swallowing nest for herself, where she may have her young a place near your altar, Lord Almighty, my King and my God. Basically, this verse says, even the birds of the air yeah. know how to find their place yeah, yeah. and get there. Even they are living at the temple. Verse 4 says, blessed are those who dwell in your house. They are ever praising you. Now, I want to place a quick emphasis on that first word um, on, on, on verse 4. What does it say? Blessed. What does it say? Blessed. It's the Hebrew word, eshur, eshur, which basically means happy, joyful, shouting for joy, excited. Yes! Somebody that says, let's go! Verse 5. What does it say? Blessed. blessed are the or blessed. Blessed are those whose strength is in you, whose hearts are set on pilgrimage. This is talking about the journey that we take in Christ, where we find strength in Him, where we, we're on this journey to get there. As they pass through the valley of Baca. <laughs> Pastor Andrea, the valley of Baca is the ple the valley of weeping. Every one of us pass through a valley of weeping. Every one of us pass through situations and circumstances where we it's a place of weeping. Yes. However, we're not thermometers with thermostats. Oh, we're able to shift the atmosphere because 
because although we pass through the a valley of Baca, they make it a place of grace. The autumn rains also cover it with pools. Verse 7 says, they go from strength to strength. Ooh, I like that, but it's just too much to talk about. To each appears before God in Zion. Hear my prayer, Lord God Almighty. Listen to me, God of Jacob. Look on your our shield, O God. Look with favor on your anointed one. Watch this. That's talking about, Lord, when we fight the battle of faith and we have our shield, you look upon our shield, be our protector against the enemy. But then it says, um, uh, then it says, look with favor on your anointed one. Well, in, 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 the, in the context of this, of this scripture, the anointed one was their leader, was King David. And these are people that have honor. These people, are, they're saying, pray for our, our leaders. We pray for our leaders. We pray not just our pastoral leaders. We pray for our mayor. We pray for our president. Come on. Come on. Yeah. Come on. Good. May, some of y'all, listen, we live in a politicized, polarized <laughs> nation. But I'm going to tell you, I don't care whether you agree or disagree with who's president or who might be president next. A true Christian prays for them. That's all I got to say about that. (laughs) Verse 10 says, Better is one day in your course than a thousand elsewhere. I would rather be a Lord in the house than dwell in the tents of the wicked. For the Lord is a sun and shield. The Lord bestows favor and honor. No good thing does he withhold from those talking about prosperity here because he is <laughs> Lord Almighty blessed is the one who trusts in you Amen. some powerful 12 verses let me quickly read Deuteronomy 28 1 through 8 now it shall come to pass if you diligently obey now stop stop stop, stop. listen in scripture every promise of God is conditional there is always an if. Because it all depends on whether we obey. If you diligently obey the voice of the Lord your God to observe carefully all his commandments, which I command you today, that the Lord your God will set you high above all nations of the earth. Oh, it's going to get good now. And all these blessings shall come upon you and overtake you. I'm like, boom, overtake you because you obey the voice of the Lord your God. Verse 3 says, Blessed shall you be in the city and blessed shall you be in the country. Verse 4. Blessed shall you be. The fruit of your body, the produce of your ground and the increase of your herds, the increase of your cattle and the offsprings of your flock. Read. Blessed shall be the basket in your kneading bowl. Read. Blessed shall you be when you come in and blessed shall you be when you go out. <laughs> Verse 7 says, The Lord will cause your enemies who rise against you to be defeated before your face. They shall come out against you one way and flee before you seven ways. I had to read that with y'all because that was so good. Verse 8 says, The Lord will command the blessing on you if you are four houses. Oh, we got to read that again. Verse 8 from the beginning says, The Lord will command the blessing on you if you are four houses. And in all to which you set your hand, and he will bless you in the land which the Lord your God is giving you. Slap somebody and tell them, man, he's talking about you. He is talking about you. Yes, he is. Let me read one more scripture. Psalms 37, 20, 35, 27 says, Let them shout for joy and be glad who favor my righteous cause. And let them say continually, the Lord. Let the Lord be magnified who? Who has pleasure in the prosperity of his servant. This is God's word. You may be seated. Glory. 
getting there. It's a journey. Yeah. To be at a place the Lord needs us to be. Get there. Get there. You're going to hear me say this a million times. I will look at you. If I have to call you or text you, I'm going to tell you, get there. Folks, in Psalms 84, their journey to get there comes with the benefits of the kingdom. Yes. The benefits. The journey comes with the benefits. Remember that. No one said it was going to be easy. Come on. However, folks, it comes with a desire to pursue. Pursuit's one of our core values. Yep. It comes with a desire to pursue the very things that God has already provided for us. Yeah. He's already provided it, but we got to pursue them, guys. There is no such thing as a Christian Venus flytrap. Come on. A, for those who have no idea what a Venus flytrap is, it is a plant that opens up and then just sits there and waits for a bug to land on its leaves and the leaves go <laughs> and they crush the bug and they feed off of the fly's protein. Yep. Yeah. We're not to be sitting. We're not to be sitting. We're not. We have to go get what God's yes. called us. We got to get there. Somebody say get there. Get there. Yes. Folks, there are two facets in the kingdom uh, in kingdom living that requires special attention. The first one is timing and the second one is placement. Yeah. Now timing is another sermon for another time. No pun intended. <laughs> because usually in the New Testament, timing is always now or today. Yeah. In the New Testament, God wants you to pursue him now and obey him Come on. now. Yes. But we're not going to talk about timing, but we are going to talk about placement. We gotta, we gotta get to the place. Get to the place. Knowing the place where you belong is paramount. You got to understand this, church. For example, as a husband, my place is to always be with my wife, not another woman, but my wife. As a father, my place is to be with my children, not just your career or your hobbies, but your children. Ain't no one saying amen. Come on. Amen. What kind of church are we pastoring? Yeah, 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 amen, pastor. As an employee, my place to be is to be at my job. Yeah, yeah. Not lollygagging yeah. and getting paid for what you don't do. Come on. Yeah. It's getting tight and right all of a sudden. As an entrepreneur, my place is with my business. Because right. if you don't invest your time in your business, then you won't have a business. Yeah. Yeah. Are you hearing me say yes? Yeah. As a follower of Christ, my place is always pursuing God's presence. Uh oh, it's going to get tight, even tighter now. Because we want to be a follower, but we don't want to pursue Him. How can you be a follower if you're not getting there where He is? As a member of, the, of His body, my place is in the church where I'm planted. Well, you know, I don't need, I just cut a, you know, short church. I don't, have, I don't have to go to church to be a Christian. My, every, time I, every time I hear that, my left side of my face goes numb. That doesn't even make any sense. Because if you want to identify with, it's like you want to identify with the head, but you don't want to identify with the body. Jesus said, this is my body. Which is who? The people that you think are hypocrites. The people that you know will stab you in the back. The imperfect people like you. Come on. Yes. Well, I'm looking for a perfect church. Let me know. <laughs> when you find one. And if you do, it won't be perfect anymore. You know why? Because you're there. Exactly. Amen. As a person wanting to pursue ministry, my place is to be under mentors and spiritual fathers. See, see you, you got to find your place. See, the fight is always in getting there, getting to the place, getting to the place. Getting there is striving for divine order. Getting there is the proper, is proper kingdom alignment. That is why getting there 
always leads to prosperity. Amen. Now, I'm going to enter into an area where it's going to clash. Always understand this. Never ever follow a preacher or if you decide not to come to this church anymore, that's between you and the Lord. However, wherever you go, don't go to where you hear what you want to hear. Go to where you're being challenged. If you're going to pay for a membership at the gym, don't let a don't let a trainer eating Lay's potato chips sitting down and telling you to pick up lightweight. Don't, don't invest in him or her. Invest in somebody that's going to make you sweat and it's going to cause you some pain so you can get some gains. Come on, somebody. Say yes. So let's talk prosperity here. Are uh, you one of them prosperity preachers? <laughs> I am not a poverty preacher. I don't believe in being poor. (laughs) Folks, do you believe that God wants you to live in the abundance and the overflow of his goodness, mercy, and provision? Yes. Yes. Thank you for all three of you. I'll ask that again. I'm, I'm not asking yet. I'm, I'm just, I'm literally asking, like, I want your response. Do you believe that God wants you to live in the abundance and the overflow of his goodness, his mercy, and his provision? Yes. Okay. So we're starting off good. So scripture declares that God takes pleasure <laughs> in our prospering. Amen. See, God isn't magnified when you're broke, busted, and disgusted. Come on, God doesn't get glory when you can't pay your rent. God does not get glory when you're not providing for your family. You see, some of you understand this. I'm, 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 ooh. Yeah, listen, if you think I'm picking on you, I'm not. Trust me. Trust me. I, I'm your pastor, but you don't live 24-7 in my head. So, so, but listen, if you ain't working, you ain't worshiping God. Come on. As a matter of fact, you're doing the anti. Come on. You know, worshiping God is mostly the work from your hands and your feet and your mind. Yeah. Scripture actually says if you don't work, you don't eat. That's right. You shouldn't eat if you ain't working. I was getting tight and right, but I'm just going to keep going. Because, see, I got to shift the mindset here. Because when we learn how to get there, his presence, his place, his house, his responsibility, it starts to shift the way we think and do things, and it will automatically align you with his prosperity. Amen. God isn't glorified when you have a dream but no resources to fulfill the dream and the desires of your heart. See, God desires that we prosper, but we have to realize that prosperity is not just about money. Let's let's just get that fixed right now. Because some of you right now, you're sweating. Why? Because if Talking about money in church makes you sweat. It's because you're afraid that the God that sits on the throne, which is money, not Jesus, is getting challenged. Come on. Come on. Somebody's like, oh, he don't even care. He's just going there. Yes, I am. Why? Because the devil's already been going there. Come on. I got to get the enemy out of your thinking. Yes. yes. And I'm trying to do it surgically. But sometimes you just got to stick your hand in the ground and yank it up. Yep. Somebody say, yeah. yeah. You, see, you see, prosperity is taken from the Hebrew word shalom. shalom. Mm-hmm. That's actually the word. For some of you Greek scholars, you go, that's not the word. The word shalom is peace. Exactly. Same synonym. Mm-hmm. Prosperity and peace go hand in hand. Amen. 
Well, it means it means the wholeness and completeness in life. Yes. Being fully satisfied. I like to define pro uh, prosperity uh, as uh, and peace as nothing missing and nothing broken in your life. Because prosperity refers to the welfare. It refers to the safety, protection, provision, mental state, emotional state, physical state, and spiritual state. See, it's not just about money. Because I know a lot of people with a lot of money with a messed up mental state, messed up emotional state, messed up physical state, and definitely messed up spiritual state. So we, we, we also find the same principle when, when, when the Apostle John prayed in, 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 the, in the letter of 3 John, uh, 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 verse 2. It says, Beloved, I pray that you may prosper in all things and be in health just as your soul prospers. See, right there, the Greek word for prosper comes from the prefix EU. Go ahead and throw that up there for me. U, e -U, which means to be happy. And form, and from, excuse me, the root word odos, which means a way or path, also a journey. Watch this. Happy in the journey. Joy in the journey. Joy in the journey. Prosperity means as I'm getting there. As I'm finding the hill of Zion, as I'm going through the valley of Baca, I'm making a place of springs. As I get there, no good thing will he withhold from those who live uprightly. In my journey, I am joyful in my journey. I am happy in my journey. I know that 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 he has provided every need that I have according to his riches and glory. Are y'all hearing me say yes? Because God desires that you prosper in your soul. I like Genesis 39. Genesis 39 says, The Lord was with Joseph. And, read it. He was a successful man. Y'all yeah, remember Joseph, right? Thrown in the yep. pit, his brothers. If you don't know the story, you got to read it, Genesis 39. And he was in the house of his master, the Egyptian. Wait, wait, what? Listen. Everybody look at me. God made him a successful man, and yet he was a slave. Slavery has been gone a long time, but unfortunately, we have people who still live like slaves. And if you think I'm only picking on the African Americans, wrong. There's a lot of white slaves and Hispanic slaves. Because it doesn't matter the skin color or nothing. It, slavery is a state of mind. Yeah. yeah. Amen. Come on. Lord. And I'm not talking about physical slaves. I'm talking about spiritual slaves. Yeah. Mental slaves. Joseph was a slave at Potiphar's house. But yet, God still made him a successful man. And his, verse 3 says, and his master saw that the Lord was with him and that the Lord made all he did to prosper in his hand. See, God desires for you to prosper in your soul. Because when your soul prospers, then your mind is being transformed. So regardless if you're a slave or not, doesn't matter. It does not matter. Regardless if you're unemployed. It does not matter, regardless if you're divorced. It does not matter, regardless if you're handicapped. It does not matter, regardless if you were beat with barbed wire when you were a kid. Come on. It does not matter. God can still, in your situation, in your background, where you came from, he can turn it around and still prosper you in the middle of your stuff. Why? Because 
if we should see a reflection of prosperity transforming all the affairs of our life, Amen. making us whole. We got to eliminate thinking that prosperity is only about money. Come on. Money is one of the spokes of prosperity. Important spokes. But money is not, money is the fruit. Come on. Prosperity is the root. Come on, that's good. Come on. We'll talk about money in just a little bit. Is that all right? It's not okay? Come on. Oh, it's okay? All right. Being prosperous includes everything you do, everything you think. Everything you believe, it means you should be progressing toward the prize of your high calling in Christ Jesus. Yes. Moving forward. One thing that I do is forget what is behind me and I press toward what's ahead. I get there. God has a place of prosperity for every one of us and we got to get there. Yeah. Got to get there. Folks, your health, your finances, your marriage, your business, your ministry, everything is supposed to prosper. Yes. Why? Because your whole life should reflect the prosperity of your soul. Yeah. If your soul is depleted, then your life is going to be depleted. Yeah. Come on. Yeah. Good. Oh, I'm trying to preach here, y'all. Y'all getting this? Yes. So... Let, let, me, let, me, let me make it a little bit more practical for, for, for some of us here. Now, you got to come next week. Because next week I'm going to get a little deeper into this subject matter. Come on. And for th some of you who want to see debt broken off of your life, if come you want to see um, lack broken off of your yeah. life, you, you got to be here. You come can't on. miss. Amen. you got to get there to get the word. Okay? Yeah, yeah. Are y'all hearing me say yes? yes? All right, here we go, here we go. So let me give you some keys here. The key is for us to constantly, watch this, you ready? Think the thoughts of God as expressed throughout his word. Show me in scripture where God thinks lack. I'll wait, I'll wait. That's good. Or maybe show me in scripture that God thinks insufficiency. It's impossible Come on. because one of his names is El Shaddai. Amen. Come on. The all-sufficient one. And some of y'all, you're going to get offended at this. But if you study the word yes. and not just, you know, social media reels, Come on. <laughs> then you won't get offended. Come on. See, God's not male or female. As a matter of fact, he's both. Because El Shaddai, it literally means the many-breasted one. The term El Shaddai, the all-sufficient one, in other words, he can nurture. See, God is a father and a nurturer. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, my God, it's a, my God smokes cigars and wears uh, blue jeans. And no, no, no. He's both. He's the provider and a nurturer. El Shaddai means the all-sufficient one. Look it up in the Hebrew. It means the many-breasted one. In other words, in other words, he's got a teeth for everybody. Come on, <laughs> come on. That's disgusting. It wasn't. It's not as disgusting as the movie you saw last week. Come on. When I when I teach like this. I want us to bear open and, and, and look at God's word for what God's word is. Yes, come on, yes. He's El Shaddai. He will provide for you. Yes. He doesn't think lack. He doesn't think insufficiency. Does God ever think poverty? He doesn't. Come on. Come on. He is not poor. Come on. And to say that you have to be poor to be holy, it's religion. There you go. Come yeah, on. there you go. It's religion. Well, what is the Bible says? You know, it's, it's a whole lot harder for a camel to go through an eye of a needle than a rich man to enter the kingdom of heaven. 
It doesn't mean that rich people go to hell. Come on. Yeah. Because if that's the case, every one of y'all are going to hell. How dare you? I'm not rich. You are 1%. You're in the top 1% of the world's population. Exactly. Come on. See, what you have to do is get in, get your passport, get on a Come plane, on. and go into a developing country. Come on, Come on. Come on. There you go. And you end up realizing... When you're sweating at the equator or below, Come on. how rich it is to have air conditioning. Come on. Come on. Come on. Yes. Come on. When you're hungry, you can't, and you're that poor, you can't go to Waterburger. Come on. When you're selling scraps for pennies yeah. so you on. can barely eat. Come on. You the rest of the little world's that way? Yes. Folks, in the United States of America, minimum wagers are wealthy compared to the rest of the world. Because when you take a shift and look at your perspective, you end up realizing that you're rich. So Jesus said, when he said it's a whole lot easier than a camel to go to the eye of an eater than a rich man into the kingdom of heaven, he wasn't talking about rich people. He was talking about people who only valued their resources yeah. as their provision. That's right. Yeah. Good. It's called idolatry. Amen. That's right. And it's funny how we come against this whole you know, we, we tend to claim that and we, and we come against pastors that talk about money and we say, you know, you know, you know, it's because, you know, the Bible doesn't say for us to be rich. But yet, the reason why we're saying that is because we don't want to let go of what's in our hands. Come on. And in reality, we're worshiping money. Come on. It's good. See, in the Old Testament, they gave a tithe. In the New Testament, in reality, you're supposed to give everything. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. Give your whole life That's it. to the one who gave it, he gave he everything gave it for us. That's it. Yes. So don't be afraid about that because I need you to understand God wants you wealthy. Yeah. He wants you rich. He wants to get it to you if he can get it through you. Come on. He doesn't want you to have money. He wants he doesn't want money to have you. He wants you to have money. That's it. Are y'all breathing? Yes. yes. Here's some questions to ask ourselves. How do we, go ahead and put that a little bit, how do we connect with, with his joy in our journey to get there? Well, how do we connect with the prosperity he's already provided us? How do we connect with the promise of no good thing will he withhold for those who live upright? Yes. How do we get there? Well, I'll give you some practical ways. The first one is, number one, three ways. We have to think as God thinks. That's good. That's it. It's just not hard, but it can be hard to implement because we're always thinking how we want to think. Or we're always thinking how our culture tells us to think. We're always thinking, you know. Folks, if you don't know his word, you won't know how he thinks. Pastor Andrew, may I have your Bible, please? She's one of the few that actually carry. A, she's one of the few that actually carry a physical Bible, one that can hurt somebody. Um, I, I, I'm a digital Bible reader, and I have my Bible, but I switch to digital because I, 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 want, I want to not just memorize where it is on my Bible, I want to just absolutely memorize it completely. And so, however, I had her bring this up. Give me this because if you don't get this inside of you, you won't know how God thinks. That's it. That's it. And if you don't know how God thinks, yeah. then you will always think poverty. Come on. Broke. Yeah. Busted. Yeah. Disgusted. Yeah. You have to get the word inside of you. When you get the word inside of you, then the Lord, you start thinking how he thinks. And then all of a sudden, your mind gets transformed. Not conformed to the patterns of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, by the watering of God's 
word. You got to get the word in you. If you don't know his word, you won't ever acquire the mind of Christ. That's good. You got to get the mind of Christ. So you got to read the word. So you got to get there. Get where? To his word. See, getting there, are, there's many, 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 many things that we need to get there to. One of them is this. Some of you are only reading scripture when you read it on the screen when you show up to church once a month. So you got to get here more. One, you got to read the word more, but not just here, at your home. Yeah. Quit listening to that really horrific music right now that society has to offer. Sorry, I'm old school. Anything after 1989, it's not worth listening to. <laughs> but what I'm trying to say, turn off the sports radio, turn off whatever, turn off your Spotify, and get God's word on your commute. Get it inside of you. you. Get it inside of you. Amen? Somebody say, yeah? Yeah. So, 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 how do we get to prosperity? We get to think as God thinks. Number two is our mindset and perception of God will determine how we live and what we expect God to do for us. Yes. Our mindset, yeah. our perception. Yeah. One of the things that I do as a discipler, as a, as, as, as a, 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 a a pastor of pastors and a disciple of young ministers is that I am after their perception. Yeah. I'm here to say that for most young believers, your perception is so jacked, but God loves you so much, and he does, and he has so much patience on us, but your way of being discipled is that he's getting his word, and he is constantly shifting and remolding your perception. Yeah. We gotta change our perception. And people say, well, you know, my perception is my reality. And you hear that a lot. But I need you to understand this. The enemy's tactic is to change, is to, is to give you his perception. Because watch this, wrong perception is called deception. Come on. It could be your reality, but it is deception. Yeah. Let me give you the last one. How do we get to this place of prosperity? Well, we must learn to use our faith correctly to develop life to its fullness. Amen. Well, that's, this is another sermon for another time. Yeah. However, Romans 10, 17 says, so then faith, put it up there for me, faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Oh my goodness, I'm repeating number one again. Yes! Because unless you get his word inside of you, you can have faith. Faith only comes by God's word. That's it. You see, our journey to get there is one of constant discovery and getting God's word in us becomes paramount. If we're going to start to live our life of prosperity, your soul prospers as you allow the word of God to yeah. change you. The word of God becomes a catalyst for change. God's word. It's not going to happen overnight. It happens by you making shifts and changes in your life. One of the first ways that we do this is by understanding generosity yeah. and being obedient to his word. Okay. Every week we give an opportunity for people to go, okay, I, I, I want to understand it and I get it. A lot of people don't understand what it means to give in tithes and offerings. But it's so important. Pastor Victoria and I, we've learned this many years ago. Many years ago. But it's to learn generosity that what comes out of our life is what actually makes us into who we are. Yeah. 
And that's why one of the ways that we shift and understand is when we start reading scripture and recognize, watch this, everybody listening? And he's really, really trying to pay attention there. The Bible talks. Let's just get ready for baptism. Everybody focus right here, okay? I, I promise you. Uh, maybe some of you have never seen people walk, but it's still the same way. <laughs> I'm just being funny. Listen here, and I'm, I'm going to stop. <clears throat> the Bible talks about heaven a little bit over 500 times. Yeah. That's a lot. Yeah. You know how much the Bible talks about money? Come on. Anybody want to give it a try? Leslie? A lot. A lot. That's a good answer. You want to give it a try? Three. How much is that? Three. Three times? About money? No. The Bible talks about heaven 500 times. The Bible talks about money. Anybody want to try? This side failed. What's that? You're almost there. 2,500. The Bible talks more about money than heaven. Come on. Why? Because he's, the Bible is trying to redirect your thinking. Because most people are going to hell because the idol of money. Yeah. But God wants to get money to you. God wants you to prosper so you can be a channel of blessings. The answer is not to say, oh, I'm going to be poor then. Then we're not understanding what God is trying to teach us about money. Well, how does it start, Pastor? Well, it's real simple. Live a life of self-control. Be content. Don't lust or want stuff that you can't afford. But when you do get a little bit of cha-ching, learn how to invest. Yes. And always, always be a channel of generosity. Yes. Yes. Because when you give, it comes back to you. Come on. A full measure, press down, shaking together, and running over. Luke 638. My wife and I, we are a product of God's seed in our lives. Somebody said, well, how, how can someone be a rich pastor? Well, I, I don't know if I'm rich or not. People, people accuse me of being rich. I, I don't know what rich means because that's just a weird relative statement. If I'm in a group of a bunch of millionaires and billionaires, I'm poor. But I'm rich. I feel like I'm rich because I feel I live my life content with him. Come on. Come on. Because I'm able to give yes. way more than I ever made 10 years ago. Come on. Because at any given moment in time, I can sow a seed and bless somebody. Yes. It's called being content. Yeah. Amen. Amen. So what I want you to do, I want you to close your head. Wow, close your eyes and bow your heads. <laughs> Some of you already had close heads. I get it. <laughs> Sorry, don't do not close your head. That's really weird. Um, close your eyes, bow your heads, and you just pray. Pray, pray this in your own way. You can say it out loud or under your breath. Say, Father, help me understand your prosperity. I want to walk in your fullness and in your abundance. Help me, Father, learn the principles of prosperity because I want to be a blessing in my generation but be a blessing to my children and my children's children. I want to walk and I want to live to be one who sows seeds everywhere. I want to be a giver. Increase me. Increase my territory. 
in the name of Jesus. Shout with me, amen. amen. If you're in this place today, you don't know Jesus is your Lord and Savior. You say, I've heard all this. I don't even know if I'm saved or not. I, I just want to give my heart to God. Listen, God has, God has so much for you. He loves you so much, but it's all contingent upon you. You don't have to leave today not knowing Jesus. If that's you today, on the count of three, I need you to raise your hand way up in the air. I want you to say, I want to be born again. Or some of you, you've done this before. You've been away from God, and you want to get back to him because you know your life is a hot mess. And you need him, not church, him. If that's you, I'm going to count to three. Shoot your hand up in the air. One, two, three. Anybody? Anybody? I see this beautiful hand here. Anybody else? Anybody else? I see this hand right here. I see this hand right here. Anybody else? Anybody else? Anybody else? Wow. Yes, Lord. We got two incredibly brave ladies. And the Lord is right now celebrating in heaven. The Bible says when people come back to him or people open up their hearts to him, angels throw a party in heaven. So right now they drop the bass in heaven right now. <laughs> Boom! Right now. And it's happening. It's a, it's a party in heaven. So here's what the Bible specifically says. If Jesus says, if you confess me before man, I will confess you before my Father in heaven. So here's what I want to do. For those who lifted up your hands, can y'all meet me here, face me, come to the altar. Why don't you come? Come, come, come. Can somebody come with them. Somebody come with them. Somebody come with them. Come on, come on, come on. Come on. She came up with a bunny. <laughs> Here's what we're going to do. These ladies here, they're going to pray the sinner's prayer with you. What does that mean? Well, it's just going to, they're going to take your hand. They're going to lead you to Jesus. But while you're praying, ask him to forgive you of all of your sins. But then even more, ask him to come into your heart and fill you and baptize you in the spirit. It's a powerful, powerful, powerful time. Amen. Can y'all lead them to the Lord? Just, just, just Michelle here. She's going to lead you to the Lord. If you're in this place right now, listen, listen, here's what I need you to do. I need you to ask without laughing. Without just saying, hi, this is awkward. No, don't, don't do that. I need you to go to the person in front of you, behind you, and left and right of you, and ask them this crazy question. If you died right now, would you go to heaven or hell? If they don't know, grab them by the hand and say, I'll walk up there with you. Or if they say, no, get them up here. Ready? Go. Ask. 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 Anybody, 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 we're good, right? We're good? Anybody at all? Get up here. Come on, come on. We want everybody to go to heaven. We want everybody to go to heaven. We want everyone to go to heaven. Now, listen to me out here at congregation. If you feel like, I feel like I'm being invaded. No, we just love you so much. We love you so much. That we want your life to be full and whole and complete in Jesus. Anybody at all? Come on, there's some people coming. Come on. Come on. Yeah, 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 yeah. Come on, come on. Come on, come on. Eric. Hallelujah, come on. Yes, Lord guys are going to pray with you. They're going to lead you into the sinner's prayer. Anybody at all? Anybody else? Anybody else? Folks, to these folks, this is the beginning of a journey. And they're going to, they're going to slip, they're going to fall, but the, the God's grace will lift them up again like he did you, like he's done me. Amen? Isn't God good? Isn't he so good? Woo! While these people are receiving ministry, we got some folks that are being water baptized. And, 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 yes. Uh, I need to, uh, I got it right here. Sorry, sorry, sorry. 
And we can, we can lead people to the Lord at the altar and baptize people in water at the same time. These people have made their proclamation of faith. Some of them, even though they've been coming to church for a long time, listen, sometimes it just takes a while for people to develop this faith and fully commit themselves to, to the Lord. And so, so today we got some folks that are being baptized. We have Isaiah. You are the first one. Isaiah. It's not going to say anything, but here we go. Microphone. Check, check. There we go. Uh, Isaiah, by the proclamation of your faith, I baptize you now in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Deserve. Yeah. And there's something, there's a touch of God on his life. Yes. yes. And this is just the beginning. Because I believe Dominique is going to be a, a world shaker and a history maker. Yeah. Yeah. I believe that. Yeah. And so it starts now. Pastor Arias, his youth pastor, I guess it's a uh, privilege to do this. Hey. Dom. Dom, with the profession of your faith, I baptize you now in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. prayer chair we prayed for her forever and and but I believe Leslie I, I truly believe that you're not entering into a club Come on. this isn't a self-help this is the house of God and God's got a special purpose I need you to really hear this a purpose in your life that you're going to discover and that you and him will become intimate Come on. you and the Lord and he loves you so much you're going to prosper He's going to protect you, particularly your daughter. And I know she is like the complete apple of your eye. And, and what the Lord has for you on this side of the pursuit is nothing but his blessings. However, as you go through that, there will be some valleys. But that's why you have this family. And we make the Valley of Baca a place of springs. Come on. Amen. Amen. Go ahead. Leslie, with the proclamation of your faith, I baptize you now in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Yeah. 
God, he's tall. Uh, <laughs> David Bronsch. I can't. I, I always have trouble pronouncing his last name. David P. <laughs> yes. Anything close. He's got a special calling of God on his life. Yeah. Now, David, is this the first time you've been baptized in water? Since he was five years old. So, so, so. But he's he's been through the process. Yes, 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 yes. He's been through some dark valleys. But he, he found us. I don't know how he found this church. <laughs> Folks, he is our, our he's our commuter that lives the furthest away from this church. Lives in North Carolina. And he'll get here, and he'll stay at our Airbnb to come to church and then go back home. Amen. Some of y'all think he's crazy. Well, possibly, but, but no, I'm teasing. No, but God's got a plan on for his life. And this is the house that he's called them to. And you know, we don't see him much because he works, he's got a job, he's got a business, does everything. I see fruit in his life. Yes. And this man loves Jesus. Yes. He's crazy about him. <laughs> and I believe, David, you're about to enter into a time of fruitfulness. Yes. But even more, instead of you shooting with a shotgun, God's taking away your shotgun, he's yes. giving you a laser scope right. where you're going to actually see your target come on, come and you're going to know what to do, when to do it, and how to do it. The direction is coming. It's going to be so freeing for you. In Jesus' name. David, based on the profession of your faith, I baptize you now in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Shakira. Shakira, Shakira. However, Galarza, Galarza, Galarza. She is also getting water baptized. It's her first time here. Wasn't this awesome? Well, first time I see her. She's been here before? She's been a young adult. Young adult. Young adult? Woodward Mill? You get sister. You are. You grew up. She was with us at, at, at Woodward Mill. Oh my gosh, you look like a you don't like a little girl anymore. Be living in Puerto Rico. I uh wow, sorry guys. Thank you for wow. Guys got a, you know guys always have a plan. Yes. Guys always have plan. Come on, guys. Go ahead, Aaron. Based on the profession of your faith, I baptize you now in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Is there anybody here that says, I want to proclaim my faith. I want to be baptized right now. I am entering into a new season of my life. The old is gone. The new has come. I'm entering a new beginning of my life. Is there anybody else? Because right now we can do a spontaneous baptism. Anybody. We have towels for you. We got you all set up. Anybody. Anybody going once and going twice. Awesome, three times, perfect. Let's all stand. Woo, what a day, what a day, what a day. Yay. Hey guys, listen. After
after service, we have cafe still open, right? About, yeah. We have pancakes, eggs, sausage. We have a we have a typical lunch, breakfast for lunch type of thing happening. And so enjoy this time afterwards. The weather is 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 it, is it rainy outside? It's beautiful outside. <laughs> Lift up your hands. Lift up your hands. May the Lord bless you. May the Lord keep you. May the Lord let his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. May you be blessed in the city and in the field. Blessed in your going days and your going outs. May you have an incredible week getting to the place where God's called you. In Jesus' name, amen. I love you.